In the previous video, we've seen that in the index.html file, we've got a div with the ID of root. If you were working with regular HTML, you'd have a UL element and let's say um, three li items. Let's call it name one, two, three. And this, if we check in the, oh, we need to restart our server because we stopped it in the last video. In HTML, you would have your list of names showing up. Here we go, name one, two, three. Now with React, instead of writing HTML, we will write our components in JavaScript using a syntax language called JSX, which is similar looking to HTML, but it actually compiles to JavaScript. Anyway, what you need to know is what we will write in our components will actually be rendered inside that root div. So if you comment that out, the whole app will disappear. There is an index.js file, and this is where the component is mounted, the root component into the DOM, into that root. Let's check it out. You can see this file imports React, but also React DOM, which is an extra package that allows you to render React into the HTML DOM. A CSS file, index.css, which is here, and another component, app.js, which is here. You can see here React DOM, and we render the app component, being that one, and we tell React DOM to render that into the DOM element that has the ID of root, which we've seen is this one. Okay, what I propose you to do is to check this app component and discover how we're gonna start writing our HTML-like markup inside a React component. Let's go in app.js. And this is called a React component class. It's an ES6 class. And this is how we're gonna structure most of our components to start with. Each React component class has a render method. And inside that render method, there is a return statement, which is what the component will render on screen. Right here, you can see that it renders a div with the class name of app. Inside, there's a header and a paragraph and a closing div. If we look into our app here, you can see here the header, you can see the app intro paragraph. Let's try something out. Instead of this welcome to React, let's try to put that what we had before, a UL element, and inside times three, this is Emmet, so you use control E on sublime text if you want to expand to three items. Then I use multi-cursor to output multiple times name and a nice little text space strip plugin that goes from one to X, name three. If I save that now, we should see inside now a React component, the three names. They are in the header because I've put them in the header. Maybe that was a bad idea. So let's move that down inside the main paragraph. So instead of that to get started, which is here, let's output there our three names. And here we go. This is basic styling from the React Create React app. So this could look a bit better in our context. This is a series on React and not on CSS. I have here in my uh, GitHub repository some styles that I'll copy and paste so you don't have to look at me typing all this CSS. You can grab it just like I'm doing now. Uh, I will put the link in the video. And what I want to do is, uh, we've noticed here in the index.js that it was importing index.css. So we'll go in there and just paste the entire CSS here. What I think we will do is actually remove entirely the header and the app.intro. and leave it at that. We have three names now. It's still not perfect, but it's getting there. I will remove the logo that we're not using anymore. Just one thing, one important thing, starting with JSX, you always need to have one top level element. This is because of the way it compiles to JavaScript. If I didn't have that wrapper, comp wrapper element, sorry,
And let's say I had a paragraph tag here. Hello. Now we have two first level components, the paragraph and the UL. And this in React land will throw an error. Adjacent JSX element must be wrapped in an enclosing tag. So if you see that error and you will every now and then, just make sure you have only one first level element. If we look at our final app here and we inspect the one of these little name elements, you can see they have a class of boy or girl and this is what will apply the text. Let's say they're all girls. Another JSX little, little gotcha that you might fall into. Class is a reserved keyword in JavaScript and therefore we need to use class name if we want to add a class to an element and let them call boy. So we have three list items with a class name of boy and if we look at it now, here we go, we got our uh, nice little names. There's still some font issue that we can fix later, but it's getting very similar to what we want. It's got a nice little hover state and just to try it out, let's copy three names of girls in the middle and they should have that pink color. Here we go, so we've got our list of name. So we're outputting something to the DOM, but right now it doesn't do anything special. We could have just done that in HTML and save ourselves from writing React component class, etc. What we're gonna do in the next video is actually bring some data and dynamically pull from this data to output the list of names. And that's when things are gonna get interesting. Mm -hmm.